And in medical news, worldwide spending on cancer drugs reached the 100 billion with a B dollar mark in 2014. That's a 10 percent increase from 2013. For more on that story and other medical headlines, we're joined by Dr. Chanu Ancha, who is an emergency medicine physician at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx, New York, and he's here in our New York studio. Dr. Ancha, welcome to Arise America. Hi, Miss Debbie. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much for having me. Miss Debbie, you just made me feel like I was 85 years old. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, this, uh, this new study that released uh, the numbers on the cancer industry, it has, it's really spiked recently. Mm -hmm. First of all, what's driving that spike? Why is it doing so well? So it's, it's a specific trend in the, the global uh, cancer drug market. Um, it's a lot of experts have been predicting that this market is to grow up to as much as two, uh, $150 billion by 2018. And specifically it has to do with the market focusing on immunotherapies. And immunotherapies are drugs that stimulate the body's immune system to attack the own, its own cancerous tumors. So uh, a lot of these drugs are targeting small populations for very specific cancers, where in the past they've focused more on drugs that have been more generalized for larger populations. Let me stick to the economics of this industry first. Generally, mm -hmm. you think as an industry gets bigger, there's more product in the industry that the price comes down. That's not the case at all in this circumstance, is it? Right, right. It's uh, unfortunately, as the, mar the market's growing and it's becoming more promising with better drugs available now, and there's more innovations out there, but the price of these drugs are also rising as well, where at one point drugs used to cost $5,000 a month are now twice that much. And a lot of these cancer patients are forced to pay out of pocket as much as 20%. So you can imagine a cancer patient having to pay 20% of a $1,000 drug every month, you know, the costs really build up. Yeah, it just skyrockets in a mm -hmm. very short period of time. Uh, what has this growing industry, what impact has it had on cancer patients? More, more, uh, more not so much morbidity, but morbidity, but mortality and survivability. So, you know, and, it's great. It's still great to see this trend. Um, at can the life of span of cancer patients are actually improving. In the past, where in the almost as much as 1990, patients were only living, you know, uh, a half of patients were only living five years past their diagnosis, and now it's as much as two thirds. And so we're definitely seeing these innovations working, and things are looking better for cancer patients. Yeah, now. that's good news. That's good news. Okay, let's mm -hmm. turn the current corner and talk about something else. The uh, NIH released a, a, its first national study it on did. the Hispanic population, which yeah. is the fastest growing minority population in this country, soon won't be a minority population. Mm -hmm. First of all, what were the findings generally? So uh, this study, it's, it's, it's a study released by the CDC at the first Tuesday every month. Um, it's a very, it's the first time they've actually tackled the health disparities among the Hispanic population by the CDC. So pretty landmark. Um, but a lot of the findings showed that it, it basically compared Hispanics with non-Hispanic whites and looked at these different subgroups within Hispanics. Um, and what they found was, although Hispanics had a 24% lower death rate than non-Hispanic whites, um, they still were more found to have diabetes and liver disease, 50% more likely, in fact. Mm. Um, and when looking within subgroups, they noticed that certain Hispanic subgroups were more likely to smoke as uh, Puerto Rican and Cuban males, as well as uh, Hispanic women were twice as likely than men to control their blood pressure. Um, they also found that foreign-born Hispanics were more likely to be healthy compared to their American counterparts. Um, I'm had, sure that has to do with obesity, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's the American way, yeah. unfortunately. But, um, you know, uh, a lot of these findings are also promising because we know that they're preventable. Um, we can uh, encourage people to smoke less. We can encourage better diets among the Hispanic community. Um, and, and we can also, a, a lot of Hispanics live below the poverty line as much as they also are uninsured. And so the three times more likely to be uninsured. So we have to encourage these this group to you pursue the Affordable Health Care Act, get insurance, uh, you engage in Spanish translation at the hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of this uh, can improve health care access among the Hispanic community. Yeah, yeah, that, that's all very good information. Let's turn to uh, one more topic, and it's really a tragic story. The CEO of SurveyMonkey, David uh, Goldberg, um, died accidentally and suddenly with a treadmill in, uh, accident. Tell me, what, explain to us what we know about what happened to him. So Dave Goldberg is the CEO of a very big company, a $1 billion company, uh, SurveyMonkey. Um, he's also uh, married to an executive at Facebook. Um, unfortunately, he was vacationing in Mexico, um, and he had been using a treadmill, tripped on the treadmill, uh, suffered from a traumatic brain injury, and later died from shock at the nearby hospital. Um, and this isn't the only person to catch headlines with a treadmill incident. Um, if you don't remember, 2009, uh, Mike Tyson's uh, four-year-old daughter actually mm. um, 
passed away from a treadmill incident as well. She got entangled in the, a cord on yeah. the treadmill in that, in that regard, so it's a little bit different than this incident. But how common is it for people to have accidents on their treadmill? I mean, there have been times where I wasn't paying attention and I tripped and almost fell off the, off the treadmill. Does this happen a lot? It's, it's more common than you think. Um, you know, as an emergency physician, I work in the South Bronx at Lincoln Hospital. Um, and we were mostly seeing all kinds of trauma, uh, you know, but every now and then someone comes in with a treadmill injury. And, you know, they're usually ankle sprains or just, um, you know, falls with scrapes in the legs, but sometimes people get really bad accidents. Um, the first thing I worry about from someone when they get on a treadmill is, do you have a heart problem? Mm -hmm. And having a heart problem means that you should consider twice before using a treadmill because you put yourself more at risk from suddenly collapsing and, you know, hurting yourself more. So. Uh, most importantly, look where you're running. Don't jump off the treadmill before it stops. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, keep children away. Um, and also, you know, always look where you jump. Yeah, yeah. And don't go too fast. Don't get so excited and think, you know, you're too right. big for your britches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chenu Ancha, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Talk to you. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you'll come back again, see us again for another edition of Arise America. I'm Debbie Turner-Bell. Have a great day. Bye-bye.